this is take two. I erased the first of everything. It was just too long. Before I get into the next part of this, I just want to say a lot of people ask why I put music, why I seldom write, and why I didn't write this. And the reason why I didn't write this is simply because some people are going to be too weak to sit up and read a lot. And this way you can just hit play. I done it many a day. Mostly with music though. I hit play and just sit back and listen. The reason why I post so much music is music is very important. God give you two ears and two eyes. So watch what you put in your ears and watch what you put in your eyes. I went from rock and roll to contemporary Christian. I spent my whole life with rock and roll. And the same as with somebody that spent their whole life with country. If it doesn't benefit you, if it doesn't make you grow, don't waste your time listening to it. Especially not if you're going through a battle. You need positive reinforcement. You need to know that there's somebody or something, however you want to put it, that is above it all, that knows it, that knows you, that knows your pain. And I mean, it's hard enough to go through as it is. So, you need to know that you're not the only one. You need to know you're not the only person. But you need something too that will lift your spirits, that will lift your heart. Music does that. It's designed to do that. There's a tempo meter and that meter coincides with your heart rhythm. Uh, yeah, it goes tick tock, tick tock, but it works in conjunction with your heart. So the music the melody of the music will mimic your heart rate, either faster or slower, but it'll resonate with it. And the words become a chant or a mantra. Watch what you chant. Watch what mantras you recite. You need something positive. If you're reading negative news, especially the stupid election, turn it off. You have enough negative stuff going on. Positive. You need positive. If it means not reading nothing at all, don't. Or go to one of these sites. At this site there, particularly that I'm going to show you. I'm going to let the computer read it because its voice is better than mine. And this will be a shorter video than the other one would be. God bless. This is the first thing I want to show you is, is what's called Blog for a Cure. And on this site, you're going to find all kinds of people. You, you go into what type of cancer you have. And you're going to find friends that you're going to make friends, I should say, with other people who are going through or have been through the same exact cancer that you had. Now it may have grown different in your throat or it may be different in your breast. There, there'll be little differences maybe. But it'll be if you go for the throat, throat. If you go for the breast, breast. Anal, it's anal. Uh, wherever your cancer is, I guarantee there's somebody up there that's got it. And it helps a lot to know that you're not the only one. I'd like to, for the computer just to read you just a couple of logins that I've done. There's no corrections been made. Take for granted I was in pretty bad shape back when this was first done. So, Friday, December 4th, 2009. An event that we saw in the waiting room. This has nothing really to do with me or throat cancer directly, just indirectly. Totally just what is in my mind.
while we sat and waited to be called back today in the waiting room at UT Cancer Center we watched a lady lose it. It crossed my mind and for some reason I feel like I need to write this. We heard someone crying and crying out in pain and fear, not the usual thing in the waiting room. I looked across the room and noticed a lady in a motorized type scooter slash wheelchair like this. I know that you have seen them in ads. The lady was heavy set, in her late twenties to mid thirties. Her husband had sat at the end of a row where she could park beside him. They looked to have little money but he had hands that looked like they worked hard. For whatever reason he sat facing one way but she kept on going towards the end of the room where two couples sat. The couple setting against the wall looked to be in their 60s, and not that you can tell by looking, neither looked sick. They may have even brought someone, who knows. They were dressed well. In the center sat another older couple in the late 60s to 70s. They were dressed middle class yet the laddie's red hat looked out of an era long past, yet very new looking. The lady stopped her, we'll call it a buggy, between her husband and the two couples sitting facing each other. You could tell by her voice and her actions that she was frantic. She hurt and was scared. She explained that she had breast cancer and that they had done surgery on her, explaining what was done, I didn't listen too well on the details, and trying not to stare. I looked to my wife and said she was pitiful and how bad I felt for her, she agreed. As I looked around the room I noticed that pretty much everybody was doing the same. Her husband had his head bowed, but rather than in shame, with a look of being lost, beaten down, and so, so sad. The man from the couple to her left was called back, he walked around her and attempted a look of understanding. The couple to the right looked her eye to eye, but were at a loss for words. Perhaps we all were. Perhaps we all knew her pain and fears all too well, and those there with someone who is battling knew her husband's look. The lady to the left, now by herself looked to the lady and listened. She softly asked, are you a Christian? The frantic lady suddenly stopped, hesitated a bit and thought. She quietly said yes. The lady to her left outstretched her hand to the frantic lady. The frantic lady slowly pulled her buggy closer and stretched out her hand to the older lady, and they held hands. The older lady began to softly pray and the frantic lady bowed her head and became calm. Again, I didn't listen to the details as they prayed. When it was over the frantic lady asked the older lady about the pain, sickness, and facts of what was still ahead of her. At this time I'm wondering what would happen if the older lady answered with the truth, and if she would. She told the lady that she would be very sick and in a lot of pain, but that it was okay, she would get through it. She told her that and other words of encouragement. The once frantic lady was calmed and spoke and was no longer excited but rather calm, even though it was not what she wanted to hear. Now you're probably wondering what this has to do with throat cancer, my case, or even related to anything. Well, here it is. The lady called out her fears in an emotional and showed it all physically. What she exhibited is what is taking place inside of all of us when we fight a hard battle in an unknown battleground against an enemy that we can't see. We see the effects, we feel them and the cavalry that rides in to save the day shooting blindly. It is like being in a battle, calling in an air strike on the enemy, they bring nukes that do more damage, often killing both sides. She verbally described all our fears. Then she discovered our strength. The older lady showed her compassion, love, kindness, and truth. The biggest thing she showed her, and it was apparently conveyed without words, faith. That all leads up to a big word. Hope. It's been a very busy day today. Mom and Charlie came by then Mom and Day, Misty and Matt. Megan, Richard and Missy, and the grandkids. All in all pretty busy day. The company was nice. The grandkids weren't allowed up on this floor or in the room, but Josh and Brandon were insistent. They let them come up but they weren't allowed to touch anything or come too close. I figured high fives didn't count, lol. 
Mom and Dad stayed in the room and had Denise or I knew they were coming that fast we'd have waited long on the pain meds. I have to hit the premium time after taking the morphine so that I can get the fullest effect. That ended up being done in front of them, which I hated to do, Megan was also in here. Ended up Dad tried to make small talk, I guess to take my mind off of it, Mom never said a word, while I heard Denise snap at Megan no. She filmed it, lol. By the time the treatment was over mom left to go send Matt and Misty up. Misty said mom cried. I viewed the video that Megan done while Denise addressed my wounds, it is bad. I'm still at odds as to Megan putting it up or not. Misty had Megan take this picture of me and her. This is my oldest daughter. Pretty good picture, eh. Looking at this picture tonight made me realize that if it all ended tomorrow, I at least done three things right in my life and have had many blessings bestowed upon me, this being one of them. We have excellent nurses again this night, hopefully my last one. I declined the sleeping pill after awaking in a freaked out state this morning. I don't understand a lot of this, but the one thing I do is something that I have always understood, Moderation. I am going to attempt to talk with Vanilla about this internal swelling of my throat. Later on it's 5 p.m. and I'm trying to get the will to fight back. Charlie and mom came back. Charlie came first. He gave me a pep talk. Normally I don't respond well to them but somehow his works. He is a good man. It made me realize just how fortunate I have been my whole life. Some people have a mom and dad. I have a few moms and dads, and they are all good people. After they left I had enough spirit built up to grab a mask, get dressed and start so that I could eat and be with everybody. I made it to the creek and though I wanted to keep going my body was just too weak so I came back to the house. I was so tired that I drifted off in a nap. Denise called UT since a dentist office is located there, but they are closed to the 4th of January too. Down I went again until Matt and Misty and the grandkids came to open their presents. That again lifted my moods and I ate several bites of turkey and dressing. Amazing what just having the people you love can do just being there. They got me 10th Avenue North's new CD. Me and Misty came back here to my bedroom and watched some of the music videos I listen to sometimes. Some of those are found on this blog. I think I will listen some more. I may record some more on this day later. Right now though, I'll listen to some more. The main thing in this is to keeping fighting, and that is hard to do. At one point, I gave up. And coming back from Knoxville from a radiation treatment, as usual, I would ask Charlie to pull over and I'd throw up two or three times. I could always tell it when it was coming. And I had prayed for a sign. And I had given up. I would given up for three days. I hadn't drank or ate. And I asked Denise to please just not ask me to go no farther. And I would prayed to God for a sign and I hadn't got anything. And I quit. When I knew what come next. Done been there and done that. And I was tired of fighting. After I threw up, I raised up and I looked in front of me. And when I prayed for a sign, I 
had no idea it would be a billboard. The company that owned this billboard had never rented it. There were several of them, and they all had little things that whoever owned the billboards had put up little sayings. And the first thing is I wiped my mouth was I looked up and I seen this billboard unrented. It said, never give up, never give in, never quit trying. Oddly enough, that's what gave me the incentive to continue. So now I give you the billboard. And hopefully have helped in some way. One day maybe we can stamp out cancer. I think they could fix it now if they wanted to. But that's beside the point. So anyhow you can see that when I made the thing on Facebook at someone's request, I've been there myself. I've been there myself, and so I know what you're going through. And that's the reason I created the Facebook uh, page. So maybe this can be your sign. So, we'll wrap that up at that. God bless.